Welcome to the vlog. <laughs> I always want my first statement to be bold so that it really sticks with me when I'm practicing reading the script. I feel like that helps me kind of kick off the presentation on a really good foot and helps me carry that momentum throughout the script. Um, I don't know if that's like a psycholog- I feel like it's a psychological thing but it seems to really help. But the script I use for prelims that I'm going to use as a base for this um, it's really about using coffee as a tool to take people on journeys. So I really want to highlight how we can use hospitality um, as a way to take people on a journey outside at the cafe. I'm going to obviously cut out the part with the milk course because we're not going to have milk in the qualifiers in Houston. So I've got to use that part to be the signature beverage part of the script. I'll have three more minutes to flush out the script in front of these judges during the presentation, but the signature beverage is gonna take way more time to clean up and, and prepare than the milk course will. <laughs> Those three minutes like seem like a lot of time, but when you're trying to really have a polished routine that's clean, concise, um, but meaningful, there's a lot of things you can trip over. Um, Ta-da. We can literally scientifically measure this. Ah! Is this the right, that's not the right syringe for it, is it? We're using a tool called a uh, refractometer to measure extraction. So we're basically measuring how many coffee solubles are refracting against light that are suspended in the water. So this is going to tell us essentially our strength. Um, we're trying to reach a range between 18 and 22% extraction. Yeah, that's within the range, barely, but mm -hmm. you know. So what can we do? Can we increase contact time with the dose that I want to use? Can I uh, increase contact time by grinding finer and allowing the contact time to be longer? I think going with the reduced dose is usually your best. It's usually your best bet. Now keep in mind, this is also the first roast of this coffee. We mm. have two others that are up on that shelf over there that were roasted way lighter. Oh, wow. I, I like the development on it. Um, I think especially when I think about a coffee holding up to milk, this feels like it would be right. Yeah. The thing is, though, is there's no milk round in this qualifier. Oh, right. Okay. So uh, this for this round, I wanted to do as much nuance as possible. So I tried to see if Brett would do two more profiles that were lighter, see yeah. what happens. I really like this coffee, um, like this roast on it. Um, it just feels really balanced, you know? Yeah. It feels really rounded. And of course, as you go lighter on it, you're gonna have to work harder to extract the coffee. I've been really surprised though how much uh, things that don't fit within the parameters of what we say scientifically like make sense extraction wise actually end up tasting really really great. Oh yeah. Like they shouldn't taste good but they just do. So because we can't measure like what compounds it's taking out we can only tell you like okay it's taken out this much the water was able to extract this much. As a, if a adding heat into the drum, yeah. I don't want to risk scorching, so I'm going to hit it on a lower, sort of a lower threshold. Right, so you're gently, you're kind of gently allowing that coffee to come to temp. Right, it's both like, it's, there's a gentle aspect and a really aggressive aspect, because it's yeah. hitting 400 plus degrees as room temperature beans. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a big impact, but then I want to give it just a tiny bit of like breathing room to not get like, yeah, a little bit scorchy yeah. in the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. 80, 84, 85 is kind of where we're pushing the lightest coffees that we're roasting. So pinions, geshas, um, yeah. anything that's got florality to it. Yeah. Um, this is where we also start to see tipping from like 
like a developed sweetness to like a like peanutty sucrosey sweetness. So it's it's also there's a little bit of risk being here as well. Right. But we'll just have to taste and see. It looks like this coffee wants to be more developed. So it was actually detrimental to try and roast it lighter, which we didn't know until we did it. So it didn't work out and that's okay. Mm. By developing it more, we're allowing for those acidities to tone down slightly, but also the sweetness to increase as we're caramelizing those sugars. Uh, and developing uh, those sugars as well during the development phase. Uh, yeah, it was just really grassy, uh, very vegetal. Uh, no matter how long I let it rest, uh, it seemed to be the same result. Yeah. So that's how I knew that we needed to do more development and go back to the original profile, uh, or maybe find a happy medium between the two. Sure. And I've had coffees at that roast level that really shine, they really sing. But this one, every, every coffee has its own pattern of behavior, its own sort of top limit in terms of what it can do. And this, I think the signs that we're getting from this coffee is that it, it wants to be a little bit deeper and more resonant in terms of that sweetness. Yeah. And also, some of those acids will still be there, they'll just be integrated in, rather than sort of at the very top. Yeah, absolutely. I feel pretty good, I trust Brett, I know. He's very experienced and knows what he's doing. So I'm not really concerned about, you know, how the roast is gonna go now that we've kind of locked in where the sweet spot is for this coffee and what kind of development time it needs, what kind of charge temp it needs, um, and how it's going to react to different um, gas changes during the roasting process. So now I'm more focused on uh, getting the SIG Bev figured out. So I'm tasting some fruit right now. I really want to highlight the flavors of this coffee and enhance them by using other ingredients that are complementary. Uh, I chose this coffee just from so like happenstance, I guess. So we have uh, the catalog cupping that we um, provide for wholesale partners and our team at Counterculture. I just thought this one really stood out. It really reminded me of passion fruit. It's like this really sweet, also super tart yellow fruit. And it was really, really distinct. And it's a flavor that I really like. So immediately I was drawn to the coffee, but also I knew that this would be able to stand up to um, some of the other coffees we see uh, commonly on the competition stage in recent years. I know a lot of people have been um, harping on processing, but uh, I've discovered that, you know, washed coffees can hang with some of those more experimentally processed coffees as well in terms of how interesting they are, how nuanced they are. We're in a good spot right now. I just need to get all of the you know, individual parts of the presentation finalized and then I'll wrap them up all together when I'm doing the run-throughs.